What's going on, Husker fans? This is Ethan Bice. This is Four Hours to Lincoln. Um, please do me a favor before I begin this show, smash that like button and hit that bell that says subscribe up there. Anyways, uh, I hope you're all staying warm out there. It is a chilly willy son of a bitch out there. Um, so please stay warm. Uh, stay inside if you have to. Unfortunately, I don't get that uh, until this weekend. So without further ado, this is my preview for the, the upcoming weekend uh, starting tomorrow. So there's a lot going on. Husker activities are uh, igniting or sparking up. So let's get down to it. We got a lot to go through. So uh, of course we got the women's basketball game tonight. I did preview that yesterday. Uh, so good luck to the ladies. Uh, the swimming and diving team since yesterday, they went to Honolulu. They'll be back on the 17th uh, from their holiday training trip. I don't know what they all do over there, but uh, I would just think they're, they're going swimming. So uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get down to it. I will start with the graduate classic uh, that kicks things off tomorrow. Uh, it's a, our indoor track and field invitational. So let's get down to it uh, if I can find it. Anyway, all right. So we host the graduate Graduate Classic this weekend at the Bob uh, to open our season. This is our first look of our entire track and field team. Uh, and if you guys ain't entirely too familiar how track and field works, we do have an indoor and then an outdoor season. They're separate seasons. So um, it never made sense to me, but that's how it works. So. Uh, it, it's basically a sport that takes up the winter and fall so and of course you're gonna have the indoor during winter um, so we have a season preview the graduate classic is the first chance to watch the Huskers return to competition after a historic season Justin St. Clair officially announced as head coach ahead of the 2023 Big Ten Indoor Championships led the Husker men to their best indoor NCAA finish since 2009 and the Husker women to their best indoor and outdoor NCAA finish since 2006 last year. Finishing eighth in the men's race at the NCAA Indoor Championships, they had five indoor USTF CCCA first team. Did you get all that? First team All Americans, their first or their most since 2005, along with one second team All American. The Huskers finished second in the team race at the Big Ten Indoor Championships and had 14 new top 10 marks and three school records in the indoor season. The NU women tied for 14th at the NCAA Indoor Championships, producing fir uh, three first team All Americans. Their most since 2009, uh, while adding two school records and eight new top 10 marks. Uh, Nebraska carried the success into the outdoor season with the men claiming the Big Ten title and the women finishing third. Both finishes marked the best placement since the 2016 season. The team combined for 12 event titles throughout the meet, the women powered by Axelina Johansson, uh, where she performs in uh, shot put and Rima Odebor, uh where she does javelin bringing uh, in NCAA titles uh, took 8th place at the NCAA championships that was the best finish since the 06 season when the Huskers tied for 4th the men tied for 17th their best team finish in 7 years the men and women combined for eight first-team All-America honors, seven school records, and 32 top 10 marks throughout the outdoor season. Uh, so, as you all can see, this is going to be an exciting year. Another sport that is going to look very successful this year. Um, 
and is climbing some success as uh, Justin St. Clair took the job last year. I think he uh, did a great job at the helm as he took over. Uh, and I'm excited to what he'll bring this year. Um, just uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, we are returning 2023 All-Americans and Big Ten champions. Uh, Darius Love headlined the hurdles in 2023, breaking the 60-meter hurdles uh, and the 110-meter hurdle school records, claiming the indoor and outdoor Big Ten titles and earning first-team uh, All-American honors. The Lincoln native raced to third at the NCAA Indoor Championships and sixth at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. Arthur Peterson uh, holds Nebraska's Javelin school record, breaking it at last season's Michael Johnson Invitational with a distance of 252.11. The transfer from UT Arlington garnered his third All-American honor, uh, placing 11th in the Javelin at the NCAA Championship. Peterson claimed the Big Ten title with a mark of 252-9, uh, while teammate Dash Sermon took second. Sermon threw the best, uh, third best Javelin mark in school history as a freshman, claiming the silver medal at the Big Ten Championship with the uh, 247 uh, second team All-American. Sermon placed 13th in the Javelin, at the NCAA Championship, Sermon secured the U.S. U-20 Javelin t National Title and took second at the NACAC U-23 Championships over the summer. Uh, then you have Maxwell Otterdahl, who enters his fifth collegiate season as a five-time All-American. Most recently, he took fourth in the shot put and 13th in the discus at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. The out at the... Outdoor conference meet, the Minnesota native won the discus title and earned silver in the shot put. Otterdahl uh, placed fourth in the shot put at the NCAA Indoor Championships and tab two top five finishes in the shot put and the weight throw at the Big Ten Indoor Championships. He holds the number two weight throw, number three indoor and outdoor shot put, and number eight discus distances in Nebraska history. So this guy's a this is a strong man. He can throw. Um, Till Steinforth rewrote the school record books last season, shattering the decathlon and heptathlon records. And I actually watched this guy last year. He's a beast. He is a true athlete. Uh, I feel like anything he competes in, he could do well. Uh, I, I almost kind of wish this guy would go on the wrestling team. I think he could do, be a good potential wrestler but not everybody can do it either so uh a two-time first team all-american steinford placed fourth at the ncaa championships in both the heptathlon and decathlon the junior from saxony and all germany added a big 10 title with a record-breaking eight uh 8,064 points while winning three of the decathlon events so this guy was busy last year he and he did well. Uh, then you had Tyus Wilson, uh, who closed his sophomore season on a high note, finishing fourth at the NCAA Outdoor Championship in the high jump. The first team All American uh, added a runner up finish at the Big Ten Outdoor Championship, posting the ninth best high jump mark in school history during the indoor season. Wilson claimed the bronze at the conference meet. Then you have Nick Bryant, who won the 600-meter title at the uh, Big Ten Indoor Championships with the personal best minute 15.37, marking the fastest time ran in school history on an indoor oversized trap. He added a <clears throat> contribution to the runner-up 4x400-meter relay at the indoor conference meet. The outdoor season was marked by a personal best 400 meter time at the NCAA West pre preliminary round and six place finishes in the 400 meter and the 4 by 400 meter relay at the Big Ten Championships. Uh, then you have uh, Axelina Johansson, who is uh, one of 10 athletes nationally to be named the Bowerman 2024 Women's Preseason Watch List on Tuesday. 
The accolade is the highest track and field honor given annually to the most outstanding college male and female athletes. A four-time All-American, Johansson claimed the 2023 Outdoor NCAA title and Indoor NCAA asshole, excuse me, and, uh, silver medal in the, soft, in the shot put. Uh, the junior from Hawk Sweden swept the Big Ten uh, shot put titles last season, putting up a school record uh, breaking mark of 64-1 uh, and a quarter at the outdoor meet to earn the Big Ten Women's Outdoor Field Athlete of the Year honor. Uh, earlier in the season, Johansson topped the indoor school record book, throwing a 63-4 at the Frank Sabine Invitational. Her best indoor and outdoor distances also broke the Swedish records. Uh, the reigning NCAA and Big Ten Javelin champion Odebar has the number two mark in school uh, history. The three-time All-American spent two seasons at FIU before transferring to Nebraska ahead of the 2023 season, adding to her collection of accolades. Odebor was crowned the Bahamian uh, National Champion and the NACAC U23 Champion, setting a new meet record. Odebor represented the Bahamas on the national stage in August, competing at the World Athletics Championships. In November, Odebor received the silver medal at the Pan American Games. Uh, Maddie Harris owns the Javelin School record after throwing a 199-3 to win the 2023 USA TF Javelin title. The three-time All-American finished fourth at the NCAA Championship and second at the Big Ten Championship and the Javelin last season. From Lee Summit, Missouri, Harris competed in the Pan American Games in November, claiming the bronze. Jenna Rogers capped off last year with a runner-up finish at the USATF Outdoor Nationals, clearing six, uh, six feet one inch and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the junior from Rutherford, <laughs> Rutherford, New Jersey, is a four-time All-American and a three-time Big Ten champion. Rogers owns the second best indoor mark and fourth best outdoor mark in Nebraska history. In 2023, she placed fourth at the NCAA Indoor Championships, first at the Big Ten Outdoor Championships, and second in the Indoor Conference Meet. Uh, there's a lot to go through here, guys. Uh, Lashana Elvis uh, was named a second team All American in the long jump, placing 14th at the NCAA Indoor Track and Field uh, Championships from Kuru, Estonia. Elvis uh, climbed to the number four on Nebraska's all-time list in the indoor long jump, leaping 21 feet, uh, three and a quarter at the Texas Tech Open. She also holds the fourth best mark in the outdoor long jump, hitting 21 feet, 10 and a quarter in 2021. There's Felicia Williams, uh, earned second team All-American status in the long jump, leaping to 10th at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. In her first season competing as a Husker, Williams placed 8th in the triple jump and 13th in the long jump at the Big Ten Outdoor Championships. Uh, Rihanna Phipps garnered second team All-American honors at the NCAA Outdoor Championships, placing 13th in the triple jump with a distance of 43 feet 9 and 3 quarter. The Kansas State transfer added a bronze in the triple jump at the indoor conference meet. Over the summer, Phipps set a personal best triple jump mark at the NACAC U23 Championship, winning the title with a 13.61 meter. Uh, Latavia Brown won the triple jump crown at the Big Ten Outdoor Championship with a mark of 43, uh, 43 feet 9. Uh, maybe, there's no way she jumped 43 feet. Um, moving up to ninth in school history, the indoor season was highlighted by a fourth place triple jump finish at the at conference. Uh, Garrett Calland, Brighton senior Kavian Kerr, and Lorenzo Pazin uh, shattered the four by one hundred meter relay school record in twenty twenty three, going on to garner second team All American honors with a fifteenth place finish at the NCAA's as a freshman. Calland uh, topped the school record book in the 200 meter, 
earning the silver medal at the Pan American U-20 Championships on top of the talented and experienced returners. There's 29 newcomers who will take the track for Nebraska, representing 13 states and three countries. Eight transfers and 21 freshmen are set to represent the Huskers. Uh, the group has combined 62 state titles, four national titles, and two world championships. A breakdown of uh, you can also look at a breakdown of the tra transfers uh, on the Husker Athletics website. So, exciting stuff for the track and field team. I think they're going to have a great year, just like uh, everybody else is. Um, really, the only sports we didn't succeed at was men and women, women's cross country. And football, it was mild. I mean, you got to give it to Matt Rule. It was his best year as a head coach. So, we're, but we're kicking ass uh, in everything right now. And I think track and field is going to be no different. So, look for that, guys. We're uh, a lot to be excited about for this track and field team. And of course, you can't really ever catch any action from them until, you know, conference t uh, uh, meets and. Of course, the NCAAs and whatnot. So, uh, look, look, look at the headlines and see, you know, how they're doing. Because uh, I think we're in for a big year uh, with a great new coach at the helm. Anyways, so uh, we got that. Uh, then you got at six thirty tomorrow. Uh, you know, just another part of Friday's busy activities. You got the big one. You got the wrestling uh, duel. Nebraska and Iowa. Let's get to it. Let's go. Um, we'll take on the Hawkeyes uh, at the Bob, of course. Top five matchup. Um, Iowa enters Friday's duel with a re uh, recent strong performance at the Soldier Salute, who they where they hosted. Uh, so it's been a while since they hit the mat. Uh, pair. I mean, we actually had more recent wrestling than they have so that's one plus um and they oh okay never mind they did have a pair of dual victories over Penn and Columbia so they did get some uh duels in not as tough as uh when we had to wrestle uh Northern Iowa that was a tough duel um anyway so the Hawkeyes projected lineup features six wrestlers ranked inside the top 15 of their weight class uh, you have Drake Ayala at 125, Brody Teske at 133, who had a magnificent uh, matchup against, um, ah, damn it. I'll, I'll, I'll look up his name here in a minute. Uh, like I said, I have a bad uh, memory I'm trying to remember people's names. That's why I have to read this stuff. Okay, so uh, number one, Real Woods, of course. He's been great. Uh, uh, who wrestles at 141. Uh, then you have Caleb Rathjen at 149. Jared Franick at 157. He's ranked second. Michael Caliendo at number seven at 165 pounds. Um, and of course, it says here, competition will be fierce as four of the 10 bouts potentially feature top 15 ma matchups. Nine Huskers enter the weekend ranked in the top 30, led by, of course, the one and only at 149, Ridge Lovett, who is number one. Uh, Peyton Robb, he's still number three. Uh, he at, Even after that recent loss, he's still at that number three spot. Uh, and then you got Lenny Pinto uh, at 184. Uh, Caleb Smith at 125, who's ranked seventh. Brock Hardy at 141 pounds. The group boasts a collective 63-9 and nine record and has scored 77 dual points. For the Big Red this season, uh, Nebraska and Iowa do meet for the 35th time in series history. Of course, Iowa leads all time series 26 7 and 1. That's right, I said it. They lead this thing 26 7 and 1. And that's just because I was a fantastic wrestling club. I got to hand it to them. And it's, it pains me to say that. It sucks to say, but that's, that's reality. Um, but we still own them in a lot of things. Uh, they have won the last 14 matchups. So it, it's hard to believe that they did. 
but that's what the reality we live with. Uh, the Big Red last defeated Iowa January 14th in 2006 at Cedar Falls, Iowa. And that was a shellacking 24-13. I don't really remember that duel very well. And that's before we even got to stream these duels. So, uh, of course, I probably didn't watch it. And I was too busy wrestling myself at that time. Um, the Huskers collected two duel wins over Wyoming and UNI on Saturday at the Devaney. Uh, like I said... Um, and after this duel, we will face off against Minnesota on the road on uh, the 19th. So, uh, look for it uh, to be an intense one. I, I'm looking forward to it. So, you, uh, 125 pounds, it's going to be a tough matchup. you got Caleb Smith and Drake Ayala going at it. Uh, I hate to say it, I do think Drake Ayala has got the advantage on this one. So uh, I look for a three nothing start for Iowa in this thing. 133 pounds. You have Kyle Berwick and Jacob Bandy, and that's who I meant to say earlier. Jacob Bandy, he had a, they had a fantastic match at the Soldier Salute. So I would guess Mark Manning would put Bandy back in there against him. Uh, and get this and uh this time around we'll get the decisive win i say jacob van d by decision score will be 3-3 at this point uh 141 pounds you got brock hardy versus real woods again tough matchup uh i would love to see the upset i i think it could happen there's but uh the realist in me We'll say Real Woods got this one by decision. So it'll be 6-3 Iowa. Uh, 149 pounds. You got Ridge Lovett. And you got Caleb Rathjen. Uh Caleb Rathjen is a sneaky good uh, wrestler. Uh, young bud. Um, but I will have to say Ridge Lovett will win this thing by... Uh, uh, major decision so that would put us at 7-6 um, no am I right there yes 7-6 okay sorry guys I had a moment um, pay then at 157 pounds you got number three Peyton Rob versus number two Jared Frannick Oh my gosh, this is probably one of the most important matches of the whole duel. Um, and I want to be biased. I want to say Peyton Rob gets the upset. He bounces back after a really shitty loss uh, last week. Uh, of course, by decision, give me 10-6 Nebraska. Uh, at 165 pounds, you got Antrell Taylor, ranked number 19th. Uh, up against Michael Caliendo. Again, another tight contest. Um, but get, uh, I will have to say Michael Caliendo by major decision. It'll put, be 10-9 Nebraska still. Uh, then at 174 pounds, you either got Bubba Wilson or Elise Brown-Ton. I believe you can throw any one of these guys in. Bubba's been pretty hot here lately. Um, so he, uh, he will face off against Patrick Kennedy. Bubba and Elise are both pretty even. They still haven't settled who the main guy is at 174 pounds, but that kind of makes it easy for me to predict this match because whoever they put in, give me Ben Patrick Kennedy. That will put us 16-9. Um... Then at 184 pounds, you've got Lenny Pinto up against Aiden Riggins. I look for a uh, pin for Lenny Pinto in this one. So we will be at 22 to 9. 197 pounds, Silas Allred versus Zach Glazier. Uh, top 20 matchup. Uh, give me Silas Allred 
for the decisive win on this one. Uh, and so that put us 25 and 9. Heavyweight. Of course, you're all waiting for it. You got Harley Andrews or Nash Hutmacher. Who do you think they're going to put in? N Nash is 1 and 0. Harley Andrews is 8 and 9. I was heavyweight, 12 and 4. Bradley Hill. I don't know about this one, folks. This one's going to be a mystery to me. Are, um, who are you excited to see? Are, are you excited to see if they'll throw Nash in there? I don't know what Mark Manning's going to be up to on this one. I really don't. Uh, but either way, give me a win for the Huskers. Uh, and we'll just go by decision. So what's that? A 28-9 to victory? Now, I know that's far-fetched. It is Iweber wrestling. But, uh, you know, I I think we do got the edge in this one. Of course, it's going to be at home. I, I expect it to be loud. I expect a lot of people to be there this time around. And I and I, we need to have a great atmosphere. Um, but, like I said, I was always tough. I was a great wrestling team. They have great history. Uh, we do, too. But not to the extent Iowa does. As much as it pains me to say that, because I am a wrestler. Wrestling is my sport. But, uh, you know, we've just never really been as strong as Iowa. But look for us to beat the Hawkeyes tomorrow. That is my guess. Um, so if, if you're excited about us beating Iowa and wrestling tomorrow, hit that like button. Uh, so... That's another event we got for Friday. Um, so then that uh, takes us to women's gymnastics. That starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, it'll be on the ACC network, ESPN+. Plus. If you got all that, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, last time out, we, be, we uh, won our first meet. We defeated Iowa State. Not a very strong Iowa State team, but we beat them. Uh, and, of course, gymnastic scores are always close. Always. Um, anyway, so we're uh, set to compete in the first annual ESPN events. Hosted uh, Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad this weekend. Meet this weekend. The meet is slated to start at 8. Uh, and it'll be on the ACC network, and it'll take place at the Maverick Arena in West Valley City, Utah. We'll face off against Arizona, who has not competed yet this season, along with number 28, Boise State, and number 33, North Carolina. So they rank teams higher than 25 in gymnastics. Um, so uh, I have talked about our uh, last time out against Iowa State. Uh, last week, I think it was. Uh, so here is the competition. Uh, starting with Arizona. Nebraska and Arizona have competed 16 times with the Huskers holding a 21-15 advantage in the series the last time the two faced off in 2017. Nebraska came out with a 196.525 to 195.500 victory. The Wildcats were ranked 22nd in the WCGA preseason poll and have eight seniors on their roster. Uh, then you have Boise State. The Broncos opened their season with a 187.300 to 184.350 loss to U number four Utah and Salt Lake City. They are currently ranked number 28th in team score. The Huskers lead the series 9-0. The last time two teams met was in 2017 when the Big Red grabbed a 196.625 to 196.150 win. Then you have North Carolina, the Tar Heels. The last time we clashed with them was in 2010 when Nebraska won 195 to 193.875. The Huskers lead the series 5 and 0. Oh. The Tar Heels begin their season with a home quad meet. They defeated Rutgers and Utah State, but fell to number 25, Ball State. So that is what is on tap for gymnastics. It is a quad meet, and 
they're always fun to uh, watch if you ever got to watch one. Uh, then at 8.30, another matchup against the Hawk guys, but this time in basketball, bouncing back after a huge win over Purdue, of course. And I won't really go over that game because we all know how it went down because we were so excited. I'll never forget that game. I'll never get it out of my memory. Anyway, uh, it is going to be a quick turnaround as we do hit the road. We will be on the road against Iowa. Don't sleep on this team. They are good. Just like any Big Ten game, there is no gimmies in the Big Ten, especially on the road. Uh, and not to mention, you know, we, us beating number one really didn't become that special after number uh, two, number three, and number five went down following that. So that became a trend. Uh Hopefully, we keep our foot on the gas. And I, uh, the quotes I see from Fred Hoiberg, he's, he's, he says it as he's getting this team on track. So, does he do it? We'll see. Um, we, uh, hold on. I'm trying to scout the Hawkeyes here. I, okay, here we go. I found it. Iowa comes into Friday's matchup. With a 9-6 record following last Saturday's 86-77 win over Rutgers. The Hawkeyes feature the Big Ten's top scoring offense, averaging 86.7 points per game and have topped the 100-point mark four times since a three-game losing streak to Purdue, Iowa State, and Michigan. So they play tough teams. Besides Michigan, they're not that great. Uh, the Hawkeyes have won four of their last five with only a setback at Wisconsin in that span. Once again, a great team. Fran McCaffrey is in his 14th season in charge of the Hawkeyes, and nobody likes him, but he has guided Iowa to the last four NCAA tournaments. Iowa features a balanced attack with five players averaging at least 9.7 points per game. Valparaiso transfer Ben Crikey? I don't know. You decide what his last name is. Uh, he leads the Hawkeyes in scoring at 17 points per game on 58% shooting. Peyton Sanford, who was the Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year in 2022 and 2023, is at 14.2 points per game and shooting 40% from three-point range, while Tony Perkins is at 14.1 points per game in tops Iowa and assists. As a team, Iowa has 1.9 to 1 assist to turnover ratio and averages just 10 turnovers per game. Iowa also gets to the foul line as the Hawkeyes average more than 16 points per game from the foul line and shoot 75.5% as a team. So, to conclude all that, like I said, uh, I was a sleeper like Nebraska's a sleeper. That nobody's safe in the Big Ten. That's all I can say. I, I don't think in college basketball general anybody's safe. I mean, we did see it. Number one, number two, three, five. All went down this week, back-to-back -back days. So it's really hard to predict how these things are going to go, especially on the road. I want to say we can just go and beat Iowa. But uh, Iowa has been pretty battle-tested. Um, more so than we have this year. I mean, we played and beat great teams, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's a mystery to be solved. And, uh, you know, the conference still wide open. Who know, who knows how this thing's going to go in March? I, I, we're going to be in for an exciting March. I, I do know that for a fact. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to predict a win. Uh, of course, we got to get to that 80-point mark. But it said here, Iowa hit 100 points four times this year already. So we have to be a high-scoring game in this one. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, just how it is. But uh, can uh, Sam Hoiberg repeat his defensive performance like he did against Purdue? 
Uh, we need him on tap. We need the defense on tap. Uh, you know, and and we have been a good defense. We've been holding teams to uh, lower scores. So I don't think Iowa will get the hundred on us, but uh, that is something to be told um, from there. So I think that covers everything for Friday. Uh, give me a minute. Does that cover everything for Friday? Yes, it does. So. Uh, we got a lot going on this weekend, as I mentioned. Um, so I am only going through Friday's previews. I will, you know, be here for every day this weekend as everything occurs. Um, but after Friday, I will tell you, we do got, um, we continue the graduate classic for the track and field team. Uh, then men's tennis starts their uh, season back up, uh, a match against uh, North Dakota uh, and Creighton as well. Um, then on Sunday, you have uh, Rifle picks their season back up, a uh, matchup against Kentucky. And then on Sunday, the ladies play Minnesota, uh, ladies basketball, I meant. They play Minnesota. So that is what we got going on this week, uh, this weekend. And guess what? It's going to be a great time to stay in and watch Husker Athletics. Uh, why not? And, um, yeah, from there. Uh, so after that, you've got another busy week coming up. Uh, I will not discuss that till Sunday. But... Uh, athletics has, is booming again. We're alive and well. And come to think about it, I think we're unbeaten in January and everything. Uh, did we lose anything in January? I don't know. Oh, yeah, we did. Basketball, both basketball teams got a loss in January. So, my bad. But uh, that's two losses, I think. And everything in January so we're starting January off strong we're starting 2024 strong uh, and like I said this whole 2023 2024 season uh, is going off without a hitch and uh, I'm very excited about it we're so we're almost midway through the whole entire sports season I, and I couldn't wait till to cover everything and June, you know, like I was sitting here or just getting antsy, you know, like can't wait. So here I am halfway through this very, my very first season of covering Husker sports and it's been fun so far. So I hope you guys stick with me uh, and keep uh, supporting the show and maybe I can do this for a living. Who knows? That would be great. Um, but until next time, guys, I will be back tomorrow to recap the women's basketball game uh, and to um, preview Saturday. Uh, I won't get to recap everything that happened yesterday, but I will do what I can uh, at what's available. So until next time, guys, be excellent to each other. Go Big Red.